So, we just talked about the uh, architecture here, the, the service sets, each access point covers one basic service set and all the access points which are connected to one wire network, we can call them as one extended service set because that is one LAN. Why, so, this is basically, the, this is part of the same LAN, these two service sets are part of the same LAN, right? So, the extended service set. Um, and so you can call it BSA, the basic service area, and the stage set of station is called basic service set, and then the area is called the basic service area. Similarly, you have um, a extended service area, an extended service set, and then the IBSS was the independent basic service set, which is for the ad hoc nodes, all right? And the whole thing is in one distributed system, which is one wireless wired backbone. Now, by the way, I still haven't put on this slide, but here's the point in, in introduce. So each service set, each extended service set has an ID, and that is called service set ID, SSID, right? So when you come to a room, you are looking for the name of the wireless network, that is the SSID. service set ID. Now the frame itself is little bit more complicated than 802.3 Ethernet frame. First we have two bytes of frame control, two bytes of frame duration, how long is the frame. Then we have address 1, address 2, address 3, some sequence control, then address 4, and then the information that you want to send and then we have the CRC, 32 with CRC. Um, notice that um, there are four addresses. It's not just source and destination. There are four addresses. And um, so we'll talk about what those four addresses are. But first thing is the frame control. Frame control is simply the type of frame, whether it is a Con management frame, control frame, acknowledgement, what it is, right? And um, it also indicates whether it is coming from the distributed systems or it is going from to the distributed systems and so on and so forth. So that is just the frame control and then the duration and then the address one, two and three and four, right? So duration can be used either as a duration or it can be used as a connection ID. If it is used as a duration, that indicates the time in microsecond. And uh, if it is a connection ID, then it just tells you what connection we are talking about here, okay, between the stations. Then the sequence control is the four bit sequence number for fragmentation reassembly. So if you take a big packet you want to send, you can fragment it and give it the fragment number and that's what goes here. And there is a 12-bit sequence number for the frames. So it tells you this is packet number 1 and this is the fragment number 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so there are 16 bits total. There are four addresses. And the, <coughs> and the thing is that um, the reason you need four addresses is because the receiving and the transmitting station may not be the source or the destination. So here's the thing. There is a wired node that wants to talk to another wired node. However, the path between them goes through a wireless link. They are all in the same LAN. All right. So the packet will come from the wired node to the access point the access point will transmit it to the other station, the other station, wireless station. The wireless station will possibly transmit to somebody else and so on and so forth, right? So that's what it is, is we have a receiving address, a transmitting address, a destination address, and a source address. Destination is the eventual destination on the LAN not the IP address, it's the Ethernet address, MAC address. 
the source is the starting point where the packet starts. The receiver and the transmitters are the wireless part. On, on the wireless part, the transmitting station is TA and the receiving station is RA. All right. So the receiving station will look at the destination and see whether it is going and then accordingly handle it. Right? If it is itself, then it will keep the packet. If it is not itself, it will send it to somebody. All right. So the uh, four possibilities here. This is the most common possibility. We already discussed this one, right? Other possibility is that it is going um, uh, from D, uh, from destination at the source address in this BSS ID, or this is going um, to this destination from this source address, um, so address, and so on and so forth. So there are several combinations possible. And this is the most common one, which is the one where it is going from some station via the wireless to the other station, these are the receivers and transmitters. But if it is just going inside the BSS ID, then these three other combinations are used. But basically, so the idea is that four addresses are required because the LAN may be bigger than the wireless. And therefore, we need to know where the frame is coming from and where it is going in addition to who is transmitting and who is receiving. So this particular frame is going from some station to some other station and so therefore without going through the distrib distribution system which is the wired network. And so this is pure wireless. If it is pure wireless, then basically we have the destination address, source address, and the BSS ID. On the other hand, this is going, coming from the DS and going to the wireless, and therefore it has only these two addresses, BSS ID, the destination, and the original source address. This is going to DS. And so it has the final destination address and the BSS ID. So BSS ID is basically the access point. So it will go to the access point. Oh my, why listen? This is, see the thing is, this BSS ID acts as the receiving address for this frame because it is going to the access point and from there it will go to the wired network. And here, the wireless and the, the, the access point acts as a source and the transmitting address. And um, here, the access point is acting as a destination address, and so on, because it is not really going to the wired network, going to wired network at all. It is just going to the same same place. Okay. So this is going. This is a wired node, wireless node A and B and this is the BSS ID is the access point. So the frame will be sent to the access point and then from access point it will go to ARB. All right, if it is a access point based, if it is not access point based, then it will go straight from A to B in the, in the ad hoc mode. So those are all different possibilities here which are listed. And um, so this is the one that is receiving the wireless frame, this column. Okay, the column number three. All right. Now, A to two point eleven is a lot of standards, and you know some of them eleven A, eleven B, but there are a lot more. So what I've done next is made a list of all the standards which are there and what they are about. We are not able to go into the detail of these except just to know that they exist and if you run into a situation where you need to know about them, then we have the URL to get, get to it. But anyway, we know 11, we know 11A, 
11A came out in 99. That is the, when it was being developed, it was called higher speed phi extension in the 5 gigahertz band. 11B is the higher speed phi extension in the 2.5 gigahertz band. There was something called 11C, which is bridge operation. So how the bridges will operate and that is now completed and added to A to 2.1D, which is really the bridge standard. Then 11D is global harmonization, which is the phase for some other countries such as Japan, they might have a different frequency available. 11E is the quality of service. So when you read papers about Wi-Fi, some of these numbers come up and uh, there are a lot of papers on 11E. 11E is quality of service and obviously the academics are very much interested in it. And so there are lots of papers on 11E. 11F is the inter access point protocol, doesn't exist anymore. 11H is the dynamic frequency selection and transmit power control to satisfy 5 gigahertz band operation in Europe. Okay, so in, they have some rules as to how you select the frequency and, um, and control your transmit power. So for that one is they have 11H. I is another famous standard. So everything that is famous I have put underlined. So we see A, B, E, H. Then there is I. I is the security standard. J is um, for Japan. K is radio me resource measurement. M is for maintenance. N is the next one, which is higher throughput. This is the 11N. We will talk more about that. 11P is another famous one, which is for inter-vehicle and vehicular roadside communication. So they are developing an extension of Wi-Fi for cars. When you're driving in the car, you could get the information from the roadside post, which might have some information about what is the next exit, next restaurant, next gas station, and so on and so forth. That is P. Then there is R for fast roaming. Fast roaming basically going from one station, one access point to the next access point without losing the connection. 11S is the mesh network. 11T is the performance standard, U is the interworking standard with external network, V is the wireless management, Z is the direct link setup, AA, now they ran out of the letters, A through Z, so now they come through AA. AA is video transporting on, wi on Wi-Fi, AC is very high throughput, AD is very high throughput in six giga 60 gigahertz. So this one says very high throughput at less than 6 gigahertz and this one is very high throughput at 60 gigahertz. So that's another frequency which is coming up, uh, which is license exempt actually. So uh, actually 60 gigahertz is not license exempt, but it is, it, it, is, um, it is something that you can use after registration. So if you want to use 60 gigahertz, you go to FCC and say, well, I want to use 60 gigahertz at this address and then you know, from here to here, and that becomes yours. You don't have to really pay for it, but if somebody else is already using it, you may not get the permission. So this is the registration kind of thing. So anyway, so that they have a very high throughput in that 60 gigahertz band. Then we have um, AE for QS management, and then for uh, AF is for the TV wide spaces. So what is happening is the TV stations are not using all their spectrum. Some of that spectrum can be used up by Wi-Fi, and so that is the wide space stuff. Anyway, if you ever need to know more about these things, then the, here is the web page. By the way, this list is latest up to date today in the sense that um, some of these standards are very new, starting with AA, AC, AD, these are all very new. Um, they will take few years to finish. So December 2012 is two, three years away, right? Um, this one says PAR approved. PAR is the IEEE term for project approval. Um, so PAR approved, so the project was approved on December 9th, 2009. So just last month or month before, this was approved, TV white spaces. All right, so are you supposed to know all this list? No, but actually the underlined ones, we all remember. So if somebody said 11E, 
I remember that that is the QS standard. If somebody says 11 I, I know that that is the security standard. If somebody says 11 N, we know that this is MIMO standard. So some of the underlined ones are the ones that we just know for sure. And another popular one now is 11 P, which is the vehicular standard. So we will now talk about those underlined ones a little bit. Okay, this is about time. So we will talk about in the next class 11E.